as promised, here's the video on the Kovac K80 calculator. More of an overview, but I think this kind of stuff is due because I think people have gotten a bit fed up with the test footage from my action cam. Me basically being like a lazy bastard and not uploading anything interesting. Spectral analyzer tear down and what not all coming soon because I got one, it's in the cupboard. And here is the unit itself. It's lovely design, proper proper buttons, none of this membrane nonsense that you get in close to every single calculator produced until you get into really old ones like this. Here comes Mr. Todd. You've got a decimal system that allows you to set one decimal place, two decimal places, or just leave it for the little calculator ASIC to decide. And you've got three power modes which consists of ON and K. Hang on, batteries are playing up. Which we're not, I'm not entirely sure what K is. Uh, one of the uni tutors mentioned a mathematical function which starts with K, but I'm not entirely sure what that is. Now one of the best things about this calculator is the display. It is what is known as a neon gas discharge, or as I like to call it, aka 7 seg Nixie tubes. All individual. There's nine of them total because, as you can see, by the basic principle of counting, it goes up to eight, and there's one more. And what? One at eight? Well, it's nine, of course. And if you can't guess that, you need to go, you really need to sort out your maths. Now, another lovely little feature on this thing is this battery meter. You just don't see this kind of stuff. And in fact, we can cause it to go down by, of course, getting the display to use more current by having more tubes on at once. You might be able to notice a blue tinge in that particular tube. It only seems to be resident to that tube, but as you change the numbers, they become uh, it becomes less visible and sometimes eliminates completely. However, this is not always the case. And also, as a fun side note, I use this calculator in my exam. Around the sides is fiddly squirt. There's a power in at the back. DC 6 volts. Don't know the polarity of it because there's nothing indicating it anywhere. My homemade battery connector. Battery cover door because it didn't come with one. And this rather stampede metal plate on the bottom, which I'll slowly scroll down so you can read if you want, which tells you how to use the calculator. Bearing in mind this came out in the early 70s, where most people probably would have never even seen, heard of a calculator, let alone owned one. So... That is your standard outside functions, it's your standard four functions, times, divide, plus and minus, well, add and take away, or if you want to be division and of course multiplication, if you want to be real math, you've got a negative selection key, which doesn't work as you'd think it would, so I'm probably using it wrong. I blame myself before I blame the kit, because it normally the user that is at fault when it comes to using this sort of equipment. You've got both your standard C and CE equipment, just resetting the number on the display or just resetting the whole thing completely. I believe C is completely, CE is just the display. I just hit them both and then you're safe. So, let me pause the video while we undo the hood and show you the goodies. Of course we need a nice proper review for opening it up. And here we have the Wondrous. We have our proper keys on the keyboard. Sorry about the lighting, there's not a lot I can do. I haven't got my lights back from uni yet. We've got what looks to be some kind of inductor coil down here. There's your wiring, which is for the keypad, but doesn't actually solder in there at the bottom of it. 
Here's the back of our power meter, which goes straight into the battery, basically. We've got parts of our DC to DC converter at the back there for the Panplex display, or Nix's, and what is essentially acting as our bridge rectifier for diodes. At least I believe those are diodes. It's hard to tell. I don't see any direct markings on them. I don't really see what else they could be. And of course, we have our nine tubes, which typically, there we go, a bit of trapping on the battery and it works. Look absolutely gorgeous. Sadly, the ca cameras never do these things justice. But shall we show you the processor? So we we'll turn all that off because this thing's high voltage, so I don't fancy getting an electric shock. I had a nasty one recently from Mr. Mains. And on the bottom of the circuit board, we can see there's none of that computer routing. It's only manual. And the display is completely multiplexed. But when you look at the pin count on the main chip, you understand why. So, let's remove the keypad and show you underneath, because that's where the real magic is. There's a few little markings in that of etched PCBs here and there, but nothing that really bears anything particularly interesting or useful of note. So just bear with me while I deal with the screws and remove the keypad. Another thing I'd like to note is this thing uses majorically, apart from four screws which hold the keypad onto the main board, and the main board into the case are all self tappers are all threaded inserts rather than your standard self tappers so 50% are self tappers 50% are threaded inserts but the threaded inserts are the ones you're going to most likely remove because you're not going to pull out this board for much unless you're someone like me as a side note there's also not a lot of information on the calculator However, the closest cousin is the K80D, which I'm not sure if it was a previous model or a model up, but dates from the same period, but the chip is actually older, so it could be like the previous version of that year, or was released with it. I'm not entirely sure exactly the deal there, whether it was a side-along model or a slightly more enhanced model, although it's only really enhanced, the functionality is exactly the same, the chip's exactly the same. If you're sticking to HD, you might be able to see the original retail prices. Feel free to pause this and just read through it because there's a fair amount of interesting little details. But the real interesting bit is here. Very good website. Highly recommended. They've got a lot of interesting stuff on various logic ICs, CCDs, LED displays, Nixie displays. Very good site. I should have it in my favourites really. Turns out this was a very early range of calculator on a chip ICs, the specific ASICs attributed to calculators. But of course requires external digit and segment drivers as we've seen on the board itself all transistorized no try to stand 76 they developed a true single chip calculator i don't know if anyone has ahead of them but we've got a few little models here we've got the one in our unit well my unit and then we've got a few little variants here and there that would have been produced over the period of the 70s, 75 for example, on this unit. And what not. But yeah, rather little interesting overview, not proper review or tear down, but yeah. Oh yeah, it also takes four D cells, not D cells, C cells, the smaller one, the smaller of the fat battery variety. But I hope you found that interesting, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. There's not really a lot more I can say about a calculator. Bye. Oh look, you can see me. Hello. Another thing I'd note, look at the multiplex glitching for it's not exactly in time as well. An interesting note, I think. That could be due to age, though, rather than an actual 
problem with the actual multiplexing.